Greetings everyone. My name is Professor Gideon Kwesigabo from the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics here at the Muhibi University of Health and Health Sciences. Today's session is writing a scientific paper for publication and we shall cover the following areas. One will be reasons for writing a paper and this will be followed by types of papers. We shall then discuss paper organization, in other words the format and we shall also talk about the writing procedures and this will involve writing the first draft which will be followed by improving the first draft then we shall discuss and talk about submitting the manuscript to the journal of your choice and this will be followed by responding to the reviewers comments in case your paper is not rejected and this will be followed by how do you deal with Gary proofs and we assume that when you are at the level of receiving Gary proofs then your paper is likely to be published and therefore we shall have done our work of publishing our paper but of course you must be at a standby mode to ensure that you respond to the public's comments because these are the final reviewers of your work so one of the reasons for writing scientific papers as we saw right from the start is to disseminate results to those who need to know those results and therefore we are agreeing together that you do not conduct any research activity without a reason there has to be a reason and if there is a reason then there will be someone who wants to hear your findings or who wants to know the findings you got and therefore after you've conducted your research activity you'd like to share your findings with individuals who would like to know what you found out i'm trying to emphasize this because people read what they want to know or people read something which they're interested in don't just pick anything and start reading there are a lot of materials you can read you are particularly interested in a particular area or a particular discipline or a particular topic because you want information for that topic and i'm pretty sure in your areas where you work there must be circumstances when you read articles because you want to get some answers that will help you in the activities you do another reason for people writing scientific papers is as a requirement for university degrees and i think this is very common because for example yourself here if we said before you graduate you must produce a paper you will have no choice except to produce one it will be impossible for you to go around that you have to produce a paper otherwise how will we know that you are now a seasoned researcher in your area so that at the end of the day you know the entire process because now we believe that you have gone through the entire process of conducting research analyzing the information and coming up with a scientific paper but also knowing all the technicalities of going through the entire process ensuring that you publish your article and of course as i said in the beginning when we require you to develop a manuscript from your dissertation work when you leave it will just be a manuscript a draft manuscript but don't throw it away take it through the process so that at the end of the day it gets published in many universities as a requirement for academic promotions you are supposed to have some papers and in most circumstances they prefer that you are the first author in those papers because we believe that if you are the first author then you must have made a significant contribution in the entire process of research but also in the process of writing papers in research institutions as you all know that is their daily work that's what they do every day they conduct research and how do we know that you have been conducting your research the only ultimate way to know that you have been working and you have a deliverable is to have a published article i don't know their requirements as far as promotions are concerned but i'm trying to imagine that if you stay for maybe 3 4 5 years no deliverable in terms of a publishable paper they can throw you out i don't know i've never worked in a research institution 
And therefore, at the end of the day, the aim of the paper is to communicate new knowledge to the scientific community. And we are saying to the scientific community because we are writing so that scientists can understand. As opposed to what you write if you want to make your information go through a newspaper. The language you use is very different from the language you use if you are writing to the scientific community. If you are writing something to the general public, do you put in p-values? I think you do not put in any p-values, don't put in any confidence intervals, you don't put in, I don't know, odds ratios. People will not understand. Scientific papers should describe significant findings that extend scientific knowledge. I usually use the terminology, so what? You've gone out, you've conducted your research activity, you have done your analysis, you have developed your findings. You have to ask yourself, what have I contributed? Is there anything to say? The so what question. Do my findings change anything? Or is status quo, business as usual? If the so what question is answered, and you think there is something new to contribute in the area where you have conducted your research activity, then you can proceed to start now developing your article. Let's try and go through different types of scientific papers. We have what we call case reports. These are more of write-ups that you use in clinical settings whereby you are describing a single case or patient. Imagine that you went out and you are a clinician and you encountered a particular patient whose presentation was bizarre, but you managed to come up with a diagnosis and maybe institute treatment that saved the life of that patient. Or maybe that person died and you'd like to caution other people not to do the similar mistakes. And therefore you'd like to communicate this information. And therefore you can come up with what we call a case report. And the case report may be composed of one case, two cases, three cases, four cases, depending on what you think is best to present. And therefore, if I was to classify what type of study designs may give you case reports, they are just descriptive type of studies. You are not trying to test any hypothesis but you are describing the situation so that other people can also understand what you are talking about. You can have what we call editorials. Editorials, these are summaries or synthesis of what the editor thinks of a particular situation. These are the editor's ideas on a particular situation. For example, the editor may go through the entire series of a particular topic and come up with an idea of saying after reading through all these articles that I'm going to present in my issue that I'll release later, I think the stand is this one. So these are the editor's ideas. And therefore, the editor tries to summarize and write according to their own thinking what is presented in a particular issue of a journal. And therefore, this is not original research. It's rather than some kind of a review, but this review is done by the editor and it comes out as an editorial. It's not necessary that the editor herself or himself must go through the entire series and come up with what they are trying to say. They can use other people, but at the end of the day, it will be the editor who presents this information and therefore we just them it as an editorial. Most of the papers you will see, and most of the papers you will write will usually be original research papers and these are the ones that individuals go out in the field collect information then they come up with the analysis and they develop a scientific article based on original data when i say original data i do not mean that you cannot use secondary data as opposed to primary data you can use secondary data but at the end of the day this will be original work because somebody must have gone out, collected information about whatever you want to talk about, and maybe compiled it as secondary data, and someone else came and reviewed that, and analyzed that one, and come and maybe 
came up with what you would call original research papers. But the most typical original research papers, there will be ones, the ones whereby, for example, you develop your proposal, either in the lab or in the field or whatever, in a clinical setting, in communities, you collect your information, maybe using whatever mechanism, handheld gadgets or papers or whatever. Then you analyze your information after entering it into the specific computer and whatever, and come up with analysis and you write the papers. Another common type of article is what you would call review articles. And these are usually written by individuals who are gurus in that specific area. So for example, if you were a seasoned researcher in the area of maternal health, and maybe in particular perinatal mobility and mortality maybe, and somebody wanted you to tell us the status or the state of the art management of perinatal sepsis and you were asked to write a review article on the current management of mobility or whatever and you go out and read recent articles about management of postnatal sepsis then you would like to write a compiled information about the current management of postnatal sepsis usually people who develop review articles they read extensively it's not uncommon to find 300 to 400 references for a review article. Actually, the references are longer than the article itself. So, not that they are putting those to show that they are very good readers. No, they read them. Because one of the things that we shall discuss later, when you are developing your article, you must make sure the reference you are including, you actually read it and you never misquoted that reference. Because, as we shall see later, the ultimate reviewers are the readers. People will read, they will counter check and see whether you have quoted the reference correctly. And when they find out that you have misquoted the reference, you are in big trouble. For example, you are quoting my paper. I know the way I wrote it. And I go to your reference. I find that you have written something which I never wrote. I know straight away that you misquoted me. And when people start making a lot of noise, then your credibility starts going down. It's better you don't write anything rather than writing and then your credibility goes down. So, review articles help most people because they have done the good job for you. Instead of you going to read 300 articles, you can read a review article and get some idea of what's happening in that field. And therefore, for example, if somebody was to ask you to develop a review article in a particular discipline or a particular activity, if I come and read your work, you have simplified my job. At least you give me a starting point of knowing what articles to read more or whatever to focus on those sorts of things. So, one of the activities that I would wish you to do is to go out and look for a review article of your own choice and at least see what is included, what is the topic, and how many references have been used for that particular review article. And sometimes you have what we call letters to the editor. We call them letters, but they are short articles. Usually, letters to the editor will be in response to what occurred or to what was presented in issues of that particular journal. I'll give you an example. There is a situation that occurred some years ago. There's one researcher who wanted to test whether aspirin, it decreases pruritis, that is itching, compared to other drugs. So this guy was a seasoned researcher who is a dermatologist, a skin specialist. And they wanted to see whether if you give one group of people aspirin and the other group alternative medicine, whether the use of aspirin will be associated with decreased itching. And therefore this guy took a sample size of about 10 people in one group and 12 people in the other group. This guy followed all the procedures for what we call a randomized controlled trial, double blind. So at the end of the day, this guy came up with the conclusion of saying aspirin is very effective in controlling itching for people who have itchy skins based on a sample size of 10 individuals in one group and 12 individuals in the other group. The funny thing, this article was published in one of the journals some years ago. You know what happened? After it was published, maybe today, the following week, there were maybe a hundred letters to the editor, which were also published, complaining, saying this work should have never been published because the role of a chance finding was not taken care of because the sample sizes were inconclusive. And therefore, people were writing, 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 writing letters to the editor as a feedback. And therefore, sometimes people can react to a particular situation that has appeared in a particular journal with the aim 
of educating the public and also educating the editor that they should stop making mistakes because we said the ultimate reviewers are the readers i'm saying this because we shall see when you send in your article usually it will be sent to reviewers sometimes you have three sometimes four reviewers but these are only four people and they provide their ideas they evaluate your article and they provide you feedback but when your article is published it may be read by a million people and now those million people are the ultimate reviewers because they will always ask you they can send you a lot of information they will ask you through email they can do whatever and that's why whenever you publish your article you must continue indicating the means of communication if somebody wants to reach you you can't hide you publish your work at the end you must put how can we get in touch with you so that we can now bombard you with questions if we think we have not written something good but of course if your paper is good no questions or sometimes people will ask you questions say ah can you tell us we want to do a similar study can you a little bit explain did you find any challenges in conducting this and this and this then you just describe and explain which is also good because it means you are somehow good rather than having people to keep quiet and not even ask you any question over time